Hello there everybody, it's Sally here and welcome back to Tuesday Teaching Tips of after two weeks where I've been unwell and not able to join you. So today what we're going to look at is I'm going to give you three sort of three thoughts on helping pupils who might be struggling to play hands together. Um, and I know this can be a problem with some students that they they do have a problem with either uh, playing hands together, reading hands together. And of course, there is a whole sequence that you can work up to um, in in helping them to do this. You can get them playing two notes in one hand or both hands like that. That's the easiest thing for them to do is to play hands together um, to play in contrary motion, of course. That's also nice and easy for them. Um, then moving on a little bit uh, more harder is where you have one hand staying still and the other hand actually doing something slightly different. But as long as you keep it very metrical and get the, the hands moving together on, a, on the strong beat, then again, that's quite a nice way in. Um, and then you can get them to swap over. So these are all ways that you can actually build up their hands together stuff. But actually today, what I really want to talk about are three ideas or three thoughts about um, how to help overcome the problems. Now, I think some quite a few problems happen because students just simply don't know what it is they're trying to do. In other words, they don't have the music in their head. And if they haven't got the sound in their head, they cannot realise it through the piano. So they need to know what it is that they're, they're wanting to achieve. They need to know how the melody goes. Maybe they've sung the melody already. Maybe they've certainly played it hands separately with the melody. Uh, they've got to know what it is that the, the, the other part, at the moment I'm waving my left hand around madly, aren't I? But it doesn't, of course, have to be the left hand. It can be the other way around. Um, but they need to know what this hand does. And again, they've got to have practiced that. And they've got to have heard it. So lots of duet playing, I think, at this point. Get them to play the right hand and you play the left hand. They play the left hand and you play the right hand together. And that really gives them a sense of the piece together, what it is they're trying to achieve. So that would be the first thing, is make sure they really know the piece. I think the second thing to look out for is to make sure that you separate the tricky reading of hands together from the tricky choreography of hands together. And again, I've, this is something I've talked about quite a lot. We try to give them too much to do. We overload them. We give them cognitive overload, if you like, by asking them to read, which is quite a mental activity. They're having to look at both lines, that they should know what the notes are, but a lot of them don't, so they struggle with that. And then we're actually compounding that, making it twice as hard by actually asking them to play hands together from what they're reading. So I would very much put the reading, do, deal with the reading separately, maybe away from the piano, so that you are really focusing on the reading. And then when you come to the piano, deal with the choreography and how it feels. And again, you've got to be often very verbal about this. So it might be um, you pick up um, you pick up your, your left thumb and your right thumb together and you play them both at the same time. So it's together, right, 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 together, for example. Yeah, very simple little example there. So separate the reading from the choreography. And the third thing is to have a little bit of fun as well and to do some choreography as some, some um, uh, coordination games. And my little favourite for doing in a piano lesson is to do something like you put, uh, I mean obviously you can do hand on your head, rub your head, pat your tummy. And of course there's four different ways of doing that. So you do that one and then you pat your head and rub your tummy. Of course I can't do it, there we go. And then you have to swap over and you have to do the same sort of thing or you have to do that. Okay. Um, but actually my favourite is slightly different. So you put one finger on your nose and the other finger goes on the opposite ear. Yeah. Then you have to swap over. So the hand that is, the finger that is on my ear will go to my nose and the finger that is on my nose will go to the opposite ear. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. And of course, what this is about, it's about concentration and really engaging 
the concentration in here. And that's really one of the secrets for coordination. It's about concentration and knowing where to put that concentration. One part has got to be automated and the other one has got to know, has got to have some thoughts behind it, where, knowing where you're going. And that's quite a lot of fun. And of course, once you've done it a few times, it becomes easy. And it kind of then shows, well, this is how we learn a new skill. We struggle with it to begin with. We practice it so it becomes all becomes a little bit more associative and eventually it becomes automated. So lots of things in there. But basically, back down to those three, make sure that they know what it is. They have the sound of what they're trying to do in their head. Secondly, separate the reading from the choreography that's required and make sure they can do each one independently before you then try and bring it together. And the third thing is to play some little coordination games. And I've just given you one as a starter. Hope that's helpful. And I'll be back next Tuesday with more Tuesday teaching tips. Bye for now.